Jason Reese was incredibly ill at the time. I believe he projectile vomited under the 101 freeway we had to pull over. He had just purchased these amazing shades. I looked in the rear view mirror just to see him throwing up and his shades falling off of his head directly into the line of fire. He hit me up and said, hey, you know, our bass player is busy doing something else. He's not going to be working on the record anymore. I want to see if you want to check out some of the songs that Keith and I are working on. And I thought about it for a second. I was a big off fan. I had an off hat that I wore a lot in trail press photos. So he probably picked up that I was more than just you know, a passive fan. I was like, what do you think? Both of them were like, yes, we'll be on the same touring circuit. We'll play some the same festivals together. I think that's a great idea. Our side project is subject to a lot of erratic scheduling and we hardly ever get a chance to do it. So yes, this is awesome. I think it's a great idea. Go for it. So I thought about it, listened to them and I hit Dimitri up and I was like, I don't think I can do it. With that being said, let's talk about the off record a little bit. Okay, yeah. So, segue from Let's segue. Because you, you had, and you were feeling free to take the LSD. Right into yeah. free LSD. Free animal. LSD. And also a segue from Thundercat because um, to, to to off because Justin, as far as I understand, has been the drummer for Thundercat. Yeah, yeah. On and off. were wondering if we had a relationship prior to yeah, yeah. joining off. Yeah. So back in around the fall of 2000, like pretty deep pandemic times, a lot of stuff was still shut down. People were still social distancing, still had their social pods, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. if that. Right. There was still quite a bit of trepidation about n n interacting and existing the way we had prior to spring, you know, March of 2020. I got hit up from an old friend of mine. It was Dimitri Coates. He okay. He's the guitarist for Off. Also, he is the writer, director of Free LSD, the movie, primary like writer, band leader. You know, he's, a, he's definitely a jack of all trades to to say the least right and he, he's a great guy cool buddy he and i had interacted for many years primarily because of trail of dead he was mm -hmm. good friends with jason reese from trail of dead i remember there was a time maybe in 2010 trail of dead was going to play in beijing okay and we had an eight hour late layover and dimitri said hey I am working with a band, I believe they're called No Age, if you know that band. Um, Love No Age. opening for Pavement and Sonic Jeez. Youth Ooh. at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, that sounds sick. He was like, if you guys have a long enough layover, I'll get you into the show. So sure enough, we got into the show. Jason Reese was incredibly ill at the time. I believe he projectile vomited under the 101 freeway we had to pull over wow and he had just purchased these amazing shades i looked in the rear view mirror just to see him throwing up and his shades falling off of his head directly into the line of fire oh, so no. the, sh the shades were he always had a great freeway. shades though he did. Right. He always had great shades great shades and always had an amazing ability to projectile vomit almost on cue Wow. I can see that personality yeah. wise. Glass, yeah. Glasses are meant to be lost, though. Yeah, that's true. Glasses are they're 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 ephemeral. They're not supposed to stick they're around. <laughs> glasses are meant to they're be not lost. even materially they're real. Just, <laughs> yeah, they just uh, disintegrate. Vomit is meant to be projectile, apparently, according yeah. to to Jason. Mm -hmm. The physics of Jason. Yeah, yeah. Jason is an amazing drummer, yeah. amazing vocalist, guitarist. Yeah, great songwriter, great totally. friend. Totally incredible. Hilarious. Projectile vomiter. That's impressive. I think, yeah. I mean, it's important to projectile vomit because the other side is, you don't want it to just burble out all over you. Oh, like I Jabba you the said the hut. other side, like projectile oh, the other the other. Way, well, also that. Which is also, you know, That's troubling. terrible when that happens. I don't, I can't speak to his abilities <laughs> in that manner, but I, I hope yeah. that they're limited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. We, we saw No Age, Sonic Youth, incredible show at Sonic Youth with Jim O'Rourke, one of my favorite uh, producers, drummer, producers, oh. you know, Amazing players, musician. Great yeah. solo records. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he was playing with Sonic Youth at the time, which is a treat because Guy's I a genius. Seen him play outside of, you know, the standard four piece attack yeah. formation that they typically are known for. And uh, yeah, met Dimitri then. Uh, maybe saw him at South by Southwest around the time that I was frequenting Austin. Yeah. Because of Trail of Dead. And so we stayed in touch. And I think I hit him up during the pandemic. I'm someone that tries to be proactive about, you know, the, the, the old thing of like, oh, you know, tell people you love them. Never know what'll happen. Yeah. I always try to reach out if I can. And I'm thinking about people again, rather than playing some stupid game or 
yeah. being too immersed in the hypersensory world that we are subject to, trying to reach out to people. You know, I've got a phone, like, just want to reach out and see how he's doing during those crazy, unprecedented times. And um, he hit me up and said, hey, you know, our bass player is busy doing something else. He's not going to be working on the record anymore. I want to see if you want to check out some of the songs that Keith and I are working on. And I thought about it for a second. I was a big off fan. I had an off hat that I wore a lot in trail press photos. So he probably picked up that I was more than just you know, a passive fan. The thing is, I, I like the idea of off more than anything because of the music videos and the fact that they were like the whole aesthetic. Like, yeah. Total design. You know, Rowdy shows. Total design. Yeah. I love the shows. I love yeah. that they work with Raymond Pettibone. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of this group coming together like a punk rock mystery incorporated, like, you know, Scooby-Doo style, like mm -hmm. a bunch of goofy guys coming together to play yeah. cool rock music. So... I thought about that. I was really excited. I wasn't expecting that offer to come check it out or perhaps jam with them. And I hit up two of my bandmates for a side project I do called Vanishing Life with uh, Austinite Zach Blair, who's in Guar and now he's in Rise Against. Holy shit. And then the Trail of Dead drummer at the time, Jamie Miller, mm. who is now in Bad Religion. He's been in Bad Religion for like almost 10 years at this point. So I called them both up and I was like, what do you think if I got back in the game? Because I just had quit Trail of Dead maybe like a year and change prior and right. kind of sworn off playing loud music. I wanted to get more into jazz. I wanted to get more into like maybe like folk or kraut rock. I, I just wanted to do something different, different. Than what I was yeah doing. that makes sense i wanted to grow i want yeah, yeah. i wanted to move forward and i was like what do you think both of them were like yes we'll be on the same touring circuit we'll play some the same festivals together i think that's a great idea our side project is subject to a lot of erratic scheduling and we hardly ever get a chance to do it so yes this is awesome i think it's a great idea go for it so i thought about it listened to them and i hit dimitri up and i was like i don't think i can do it <laughs> because i was like you know i don't know if, about being in a band being in a band is a lot of the unsavory work about playing music, the cost of doing business as far as being in a band mm. with the relationship dynamics. And it's just like, okay, you have like, you know, three or four significant others now. Yeah. You're dealing with different people's emotions, their different lives. You're integrating yourself into a whole new dynamic that's yep. already been in place. And bands are challenging relationships. I, I the most, major, the most. I would argue the most challenging outside yeah. of like a marriage or biological. Because you're not necessarily banging each other to get the tension out. Yeah, there's no well, yeah, and like you're, you know, all the endorphins from banging and stuff like that. It right. endears you to people. Right. These are people that you're. They're never getting um, you off. Like right, unless crazy town style, you start duking it out. Over, you know. Yeah. Rest in peace. Or, fu rest or, or fucking it out. Shock. Rest in peace, shell shock. What if the polycule just decides to start a band? Does that make it? <laughs> more difficult or easier <laughs> because then everybody could fuck it out right. i don't know i wouldn't want it though the polycule is already too difficult as it is throwing a band in there I know. so um yeah i wasn't sure if i wanted to be in a band again i didn't i wasn't sure if i wanted to be in that band again because i really liked the band and also those are arguably pretty uncertain times regardless so yeah it's like oh i don't know like is there going to be a future for this type or live of, music you know, even yeah there was it's interesting now looking back because there was a lot of uncertainty with things that we have just reverted back to norms for yeah. the most part but that memory of like uncertainty like like very very pronounced uncertainty about like what performing music would even, even is look anymore like, yeah you know it yeah. was just like it was surreal it was a surreal time incredibly you yeah were, you were like is it is it the end times you know people yeah. are like you're... well the answer to that is yes ish yes ish but I, that's I another conversation up in an <laughs> apocalyptic religion that has been waiting for the end times for really a long long period of uh their existence is it a sect of christianity yeah jo jehovah's jo witnesses yeah jehovah and so like jehovah's prince Jehovah's Witnesses are definitely keeping in mind that they expect this world as we know it to end at any time. Mm -hmm. So when COVID hit, I was just like, oh, perhaps there's <laughs> something to this yeah. doom saying that yeah, I've been yeah. trying to avoid uh, for a bit of my life now. So anyway, it wasn't that deep. I was just like, I'm not sure if I want to be in a band. I'm not sure if I want to be in a band that I like that much. I was already performing with another group as well at the time. So I kind of dipped my toe back into being in a band. But I wasn't really sure how deep I wanted to yeah. go mm -hmm. again. Trail Dead, you know, took up 
10 years of my life, some of the best years of my life, also some of the most challenging years of my life, because that's what a band is. Of course. A band will challenge you just as much as it fulfills you creatively. That's just what it is. And I'm getting to yeah, how yeah, Jason, um, not Jason, Justin, excuse me, another join one of my the favorite band. Jays, join the band. Right. But to, to speak on that means that I need to tell you how I joined the band a few months prior to that. Right. And so when I finally agreed, because after saying no, respectfully declining, Keith and Dimitri did not accept me declining. They mm. called me up and they were like, no, 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 you've got to do this. You've got to do it. So I was like, OK. Were there signs from the universe that were telling you you have to do it also, though? Just a phone call. Just oh, that's oh, from okay. Dimitri saying, let's do it. The sign from the universe was wash your hands and stay six feet away from everybody. Right. Uh, buy toilet paper. <laughs> so I said, OK, well, is there some music that you could send me? And he's just like, no, 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 no music. Just come with your with your bass. And I'm like, OK. So I went out to Pomona, went to this garage in the back of a house. And there was Keith and there was Dimitri and Mario was not there. Yeah. Um, there was another guy that was there. And I was a little surprised. I was like, wait, Mario is, and Steve are, are gone? And at the time, you know, there was just a bit of a shakeup. Like I said, bands changed. The dynamic is challenging. So at that period, Mario was not in the band. As you know, he's back in the band uh, by the time he was right. performing. So we were looking for a drummer. <laughs> at one point, there was someone that we were wanting to have join, and they had performed with the band uh, previously. That didn't work out, unfortunately. So I was trying to think about other people that we could perhaps work with, and we had a, a pretty healthy list, like yeah. two dozen people, all sorts of people, mm -hmm. um, pretty much most drummers that you could think of and, and that you could say could possibly play on this record right being considered at some point not to say that they were they were considering it themselves but sure. we had like a wish list and then i just thought you know thundercat played with suicidal tendencies for many years so i was like you know thundercat has played punk rock hardcore adjacent music right. he's a lover of all types of music he obviously can play anything rob trujillo being the other basis of suicidal tendencies which is why yeah right. uh he yeah now he's in metallica right let me stay on this train yeah please <laughs> Please. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, you're, I'm just going to go off. I'm like, funny story about Rob, <laughs> which is funny, actually, um, oh, yeah. that you mentioned Rob. Yeah. Actually, it's perfect that you mentioned Rob because Rob is in Metallica. Yeah. Metallica had the 40th anniversary of the Black Album. So they had requested that Off choose a song from the Black Album and cover it for this anniversary. Wow. Compilation. Oh, and so we what were an thinking, on or honor yeah. instead of off because you got an exactly. offer exactly. you got an offer and then it's an honor okay exactly <laughs> so you were spot on somehow with a, a, a Jedi trick of the brain to get me to think about Metallica right that was a key part yeah. with us thinking about a drummer we we're like oh we're gonna do this we definitely need to pull the trigger on a drummer we can't yeah. him and haw we can't go through this you know long list it needs to be a short list it needs to be like three people and i was like why don't we just ask justin to do the metallica song and see what he thinks about playing this type of music yeah He'd just mainly been a jazz guy and i hit justin up we were friends we spent a lot of time hanging out during the pandemic going to the beach and cooking and everything we had spent years on tour with thundercat so it made sense for us as friends who had never played together before and who were hanging out out during this period of musical live performance dormancy to just right. see what happens. You know, it's for a good cause. He's going to make a little bit of money. Yeah. It'll be fun. And it was past the point in the pandemic where people were like really afraid of the future. It was just more like, uh, well, it seems like things will eventually get back to normal, but we just don't know when. So let's try to do whatever we can to have some semblance of normalcy. See what we can do right now. Yeah. See what we can get away with. See what we can build up for and prepare for once everything opens back up. Mm -hmm. So he agreed. Uh, we got together not too far from the original spot where I met Keith and, and Dimitri to try out. And um, he killed it. Of course he killed of course it. it. Yeah. You know? And I think it was a transformative moment for the band because when Justin agreed not only to do the track, but to do the entire album and to join the band, it became the record that I believe Dimitri was intending to make, which was a evolution of the hardcore style that that off really did well at you know doing and i it obviously was something right. that keith is one of the godfathers the originators of that style of hardcore of, punk of punk you know just going back to y'all as a rhythm section yeah did it not take too much time for 
you guys to click in in the pocket rhythmically or was that something you had to find each other's pocket or like how, how did that work well it's interesting because justin being super open to creating a record that was outside of the the normal realm or genre that, that he was used to playing was unique it was very it was it was something that wasn't um, the standard idea that he had of playing in a group you know we rehearsed over and over and over again he was usually okay. getting his parts like right there you know in jazz doing a lot of improvisation it took some time for all of us to get used to the dynamics of like punk rock versus like jazz like right virtuoso drumming like it's it definitely worked as you can see it worked live it was a lot of fun but i think it took a little bit of patience on his part to deal with musicians that you know weren't exactly as at an incredible scholastically talented level as he is you know i and from my from my experience i appreciate his patience with us as musicians because dimitri and i and keith come from the school of just you know woodshedding and working it out yeah. as a band and making mistakes we're like you know justin came as the powerhouse that i've always seen him since day one that i've seen him perform with thundercat and other artists that I've seen him perform with. I mean, he's played with Herbie Hancock. He's done work with Cinematic Orchestra, uh, Flying Lotus, and is just a pleasure to work with him. And, you know, Keith and Dimitri, even though they came from a place that's a little closer to what I'm used to as far as band rehearsals and a dynamic of making mistakes and working it out. Now, for a period of time, Dimitri and I worked through a lot of the material together. He had all the guitar parts written. And in fact, there were other iterations of the record that were recorded, but he didn't want me to listen to it i've never listened to any of the ones that are prior to us actually reworking it out me working out mm -hmm. bass parts that i really felt were serving the song and were something that i felt like i typically would bring to the table as far as stylistically or the dynamic that i that i bring the first time i ever heard the record i was in florida with buttons mm -hmm. yeah and i was listening to it on headphones do you remember my reaction no Okay. Well, I don't. But I remember you li liking it, but I don't remember. Oh, your well, my reaction was what th this is this is the craziest rhythm section I've ever heard in punk music. So like, I was like jubilant. Oh wow. I was just like I was so I remember that I remember you remarking on that because you were you love the musicians. I was literally taking off my headphones being like this is the, this is like the best punk album I've ever heard. like you know just saying shit oh, like wow. that every five to seven minutes yeah just my mind being blown yeah it's it's literally honestly it's one of the best rock records ever made I really think oh that. wow man I really yeah. appreciate that and yeah I know that everyone involved would appreciate that too for sure I'm very fortunate to be a part of it especially in an interesting time that we recorded it you know finally when we did get around to recording it for one we had to postpone one of our sessions for recording it because I finally got COVID. Mm. So it like delayed the, you know, recording of the album by a few months, which is just par for the course of, you know, the world at the time. But us making that record was really special. It was something that we did very quickly. There wasn't a lot of time to second guess ourselves. Right. Um, it was coming from that place of rehearsing and that standard punk rock, get in a room together and play. And also Justin being unwavering in his abilities to make an amazing blistering record. And I kind of feel like he could have done it, you know, the first few weeks of us getting together as opposed to everyone else having to maybe wrap their head around the material a little bit yeah. more and the new dynamic of uh, a drummer of his caliber and just his specific type of drumming. Um, at the same time, Mario has come back Mario has a very amazing, legendary, in his own right, way of performing. His style, his power, his dynamic. Uh, there are two different drummers that I've just been super lucky to work with. And both of them work as far as, especially live. I feel like the record that was made with Mario that ended up not being the final free LSD album that was released still is amazing and powerful. I love the songs that mario has done prior to free lsd and the you know the ep that we did and a few songs that have yet to be released by the way i i, I oh, keep wow. remembering from that those recordings from that session yeah, yeah there's still yeah. music that exciting. It, you know we have not released and it's interesting because justin reminded me at a thundercat rehearsal maybe about a month or two ago he's like play something for me as a voice note i'm like that's us right he's like yeah, the song is not out. I'm like, whoa. So perhaps there's something for people to look forward to eventually. Um, but it was cool. It was a cool moment in time to make the, that record 
and to gel eventually, yeah. despite our two, you know, different backgrounds yep. and approaches to rehearsing, writing, composing music, being in a band. You know, doing Thundercat is very different from doing Off, which, you know, obviously from one thing, the the, the caliber of musicianship in Thundercat is not matched by anyone. Can No one can hold a candle to that band. Greatest working band out there. In True. Uh, but Off is also a really cool dynamic with Dimitri's guitar playing. I mean, Keith is almost 70. That's beastly in and of itself. He is. He's He's a beast. He's incredible. And people do focus on his age. But to be honest, there's people that are 22 that aren't shit. Exactly. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like. It's all about your life force, right? Yes, yes. You could say that youth, uh, youthful vigor uh, has something to do with it. But he's been doing that since he was. That age. You know, 20. He's 50 years of being an absolute legend yeah. you know, he was a legend before he ever uh spoken to a microphone honestly it's always in him mm. and some people always have it so keith morris is going to continue on he's releasing circle jerks he's performing performing uh, circle jerks i i will not confirm or deny oh that he's releasing new music, new music other than they okay. recently did a split with descendants mm-hmm Oh, wow. And um, he's staying busy with Circle Jerks, and he has no intention of slowing down anytime soon. Keith loves touring. He loves making music. He loves performing. And, uh, yeah, he's healthy. And So and in terms of live performance, um, where does that leave you? Do you? Like, I guess in the next three to five years, do you, do you, do you have an idea of that? Or is it uh, sort well, of? Well, you know. Up until that phone call that I got from Dimitri, I had no designs on performing and off, and that happened for the past three to five years. So it's so you're just hard open. to say. Yeah, you're just open. It's hard to, to say. I, I have some records that I'm working on right now. I have some interesting people that I also admire that I've never released music with that uh, we are discussing or actively working on music right now and i think people will be excited and happy once that's out or right. once we perform it um there's also people that i've performed with before that uh we have plans uh maybe not immediate but eventual plans mm-hmm. to work on music and to perform live i think that right now i'm just really excited to get back into gear with off the next couple of weeks and for us to uh do those screenings and the live performances in Chicago, New York, and LA. And, um, you know, put that to bed. I feel like the, the credits need to roll on off before I start the title cards for anything else. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. But there's, I'm definitely doing probably more than I can chew, (laughs) but, but, for now, I'm excited to work on off and to finish that and to just enjoy the moment that we have to finish this together. Well, um, we very much appreciate you coming through the studio and doing this live show with us, the High Epic Times. Um, yeah, thank you for having me, for sure. Yeah, it's been a really fun conversation. 